standby for next transmission. Please stand by for next transmission in 30 seconds. Please stand by for next transmission in 20 seconds. In 15 seconds. In 10 seconds. In 5 seconds. In 1 second. Yate, all you Martians out there, welcome to another edition of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Plenty of great stuff coming your way on this sort of show. You know, you know that old Terran flavor. Some more stories from our beloved cores, and news and news from around our base out here among the stars. Like I said, to radio nostalgia from Mars. Be easy. Kick back. And relax. Proto 2021. A 
long-lost Earth Day anthem recently discovered in the archives here on Mars. That should take most of us back to the days when Mars was nothing but an evening star in the sky and large social gatherings were still normal and carefree. Speaking of carefree, look out for three new OMAS flavors, pink, green and yellow. Pure calm in a tube. Right, moving on. As always, we've collected some stories from our beloved callers. And up first is a young man who might just be the luckiest one of us all. События, воспоминания, старые добрые времена, оригинальные источники, подлинные истории, надежда, вдохновение, драма, радио ностальгия с Марса. I nearly missed the book to Mars. I mean, the rumors about something big happening in Alphaville have been floating for a few years, and of course it was impossible to separate fact from fiction. At that time, I barely made it through insurgent territory to this floating ghetto about an hour away from Alphaville by motorboat. I won't go into detail, but the crew I ran with bribed an outpost guard to go have a really long piss, while we used his comms to access their infranet. Their information turned out just as distorted as ours, but we found one channel that changed everything. Some bright spark in Alphaville had made color-coded spreadsheets of shipping data a monkey could understand. Imports into Alphaville were off the charts, while exports had zeroed out completely. I mean, nothing was coming out, even on the black market, which incidentally was fully accounted for, meaning it had to be sanctioned all along. So we knew something was up. Of course, Alphaville media spun this situation heavily. The insurgents were blamed for everything, disrupting supply lines, stealing aid and so on. But it was really Alphaville stockpiling on a scale unseen in modern history. What tipped us off that they were planning to leave Earth is what they were stockpiling. Fuel, fuel, fuel. Specifically, dinitrogen, tetroxide, and hydrazine. Old school. But their chemicals used as rocket fuel. They're easy to store, but they're highly toxic and require careful handling, which explained another gruesome discovery. The covert shipping and dumping of bodies. A lot of bodies. There were so many that some of those bodies had started washing up in our neighborhood. So toxic, even scavengers stayed away. Coincidentally, it suddenly became much easier to get a multi-day work pass into Alphaville. We were so hungry and focused on other resources, we didn't make the connection. We assumed the workers were skipping on the visa. In fact, I was planning to do the exact same thing. So actually, I lucked out. I'm a small guy, and Alphaville was so strapped for labor at that point that I was given an unscreened pass and ended up in heavy labor, moving enormous containers into storage with mechanical suits. But it didn't fit them. So I was just given a scanner instead and told to scan serial numbers all day. It was very hard to breathe, so I traded for a spare hazmat suit from a drunk guard and put it on. Not unusual at all to hang out all day in a hazy. Technically, just walking outside required one those days. That's what saved me twice. Whew. I mean, hindsight is 2020, but those containers were the rocket fuel. And in no way was it being stored and transported safely. All those guys died, withered to skin and bone. Nasty stuff. Again, it was all hidden in plain sight. Hell, we were all skin and bone at that point. We just assumed everyone was starving. I only got onto one of the last ships up to Mars because I was in a hazmat suit and holding that scanner, which I think had stopped working within the first days of my assignment. I never told anyone, and no one ever asked. I guess I was confused with security or something. All I remember is being yelled at, rushed into a shell, and then everyone patting me on the back and calling me Scully. The name embedded in the biometrics of the suit. I never saw my crew or the sky again. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Wow, what amazing luck to be in the right suit at the right time. Just goes to show, dressing appropriately for the job can really go a long way. Speaking of dressing appropriately, here's a Mars fun fact. 
Despite an average temperature of well below minus 80 degrees centigrade, if you step outside without a suit on, you won't freeze to death, your blood will boil. That's due to the low atmospheric pressure outside. So please maintain your suits properly and follow decontamination protocols strictly at all times when returning from extra habitat activities. No suit, no life as we say. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Right, how about a 21st century love song remixed for the 22nd? Who's watching who? Espionage or true love? I guess we'll never really be quite sure. Surveillance love song, an oldie, but a goodie. Sophie Jazz reminding us that love remains as complicated as ever, despite our patented matchmaking algorithms and genetic profiling. On the subject of complications, the Mars Time Conglomerate has asked me to mention that even though a Mars Sol is 40 minutes longer than a day on Earth, you do not have to manually add 40 minutes to your clocks every Sol. We are officially on Mars clock time. So every second, minute and hour across all systems and devices are 2.7% longer by design. 
I know it's confusing at first, but just keep time as usual. For all practical purposes, we live a 24 hour day up here, just like we did on Earth. Okay, on with the show. Well, we've had a few requests for some classical music, and boy do I have a double treat for all you classical and vinyl lovers out there. A genuine record playing off an actual record player on loan from a dedicated RNFM fan. So grab a tube of OMS, sit back, and enjoy some chill neoclassical vibes with that warm vinyl sound right here on Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Away from home. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Now, as much as we appreciate our regular callers, there is one person we would really love to hear from. A man many of us owe our lives to. Our national hero, the Mars mission pilot, who brought us here safely so many years ago. Believe it or not, he finally made it back to Earth. After all these years, his dream finally came true. As we all know, he's had a very difficult time adapting to life here on Mars. We all have, just not in the public eye like him. So Charlie, this is Radio Nostalgia from Mars, personally reaching out to you. Charlie, we'd really appreciate it if you took some time to share a bit of the atmosphere of Earth with us. I'm sure many of our listeners are eager to hear your thoughts on being back. Just speak into the mic in your helmet. A few recorded words. Anything. probably listening now from the rooftop somewhere in Alphaville. So stay tuned to see if he responds. But to be honest, I don't think we'll be hearing from him anytime soon, sadly. Oh well, who can blame him? 
Let's not spoil his moment any longer. Continue our own trip down memory. Take a moment, relax, and remember with Radio Nostalgia.
Muzika iz starih dobrih dana. Radio Nostalgija sa masom. From neoclassical to electronica, we really do have it all here on Radio Nostalgia from Mars. First we heard an original vinyl with music from an unknown composer, lost to time, I'm afraid. All I can say is it's a white label test pressing found in a recycling bin with just the word aftermath written across the label. After that we got the blood pumping with an upbeat tune from Polytet AD and their classic tune, Do You Love Me? Want to keep that blood pumping? Remember. Exercise is mandatory. No groans, no bones. And mental exercise is just as important, so get on down to your local rec center for a dose of mentally stimulating team activities and some delicious OMAS. Okay, on to our next caller for the show. Money reminds us that one person's pleasure is another person's pain, and that we might not all relax in the same way to the same things. I go back in a heartbeat. Tesla City is unbearable. As far as I'm concerned, this promised land is anything but a dictatorship without oxygen. All these daily routines and protocols about everything we took for granted on Earth are so exhausting. Is it safe to take off your hazmat to breathe? Is the water distilled from all our urine really safe? And exactly what behavior will trigger a social credit demotion? Not to mention, every sneeze is suspect. The whole dome has to be sanitized if someone even sniffles. You'd think we figured it out during the pandemic. I know social distancing up here is impossible, but how freaking difficult is it to keep your hands clean and just not sneeze on stuff? Anyway, Maybe that's humanity in a nutshell. After all, we walked on the moon before really learning to walk on Earth. I digress. I just want to say that the effort put into maintaining basic life functions in this state-of-the-art society outweighs the benefit of being alive. Use your head, can't you? Use your head. You're on Earth, there's no cure for that. Sam Beckett wrote that in Endgame. We're not cured regardless of what our de facto overlords claim. It's ironic that the only thing we manage to export culturally onto another planet is a Silicon Valley brand of Protestantism. Sorry for rambling. Anyway, I called into the program to share some Earth sounds I captured. I'm sure listeners of RNFM who suffer from nostalgia like me will appreciate them. In the Meditation Dome, we can listen to the light sounds of the Tuscan country, the olive grove shores of Catalonia, the blue Danube below the Schwarzwald. I went to the Meditation Dome a few times, but just like yoga, I can't stand it. Simply, I don't miss nature at all. I was never a nature person, never really liked hiking or camping. I miss the city. This whole predicament started because we mixed with wilderness in the first place. This bullshit about mother nature sugarcoated the fact that maybe we were supposed to keep a sharp boundary between ourselves and the wild. And now we're demoted from earthling to miserable Martian status. So at the end of every day, or I mean soul, I escape into texts I brought along. I drink that horrid canteen coffee and listen to urban sounds I recorded 15 years ago, mostly in New York and London. Here are some of my favorite sounds. Here's the sound of my bicycle rolling down the street. of the bustling city in the morning, a call and response of cars and birds. And the giggling of my kids in Washington Square as a group of street performers play the boombox and do tricks.
kettle going off and the smell of Turkish coffee. And for some reason, I'm obsessed with the sound of the New York MTA.